It's been a while. Quick video today. I've been really busy on a project. I have, quite honestly, I've been pouring my heart and soul into this damn project. I, I, I'm already going to say that this is the best work I've ever done in anything. Seriously. There's already about seven hours of video content uploaded and probably about the same to go. So I would say about 60 videos. And I just wanted to share with you one of those about 60 videos. So you have an idea of what's included in the course. If you're interested in this, then all the details about the course are down below. I was trying to think how to explain to you that this is actually great value. Maybe the best thing I can say is that I wish something like this had existed when I first started racing because I would have saved so much time, money and effort if I could have just got this information, used it to practice and improve. And I think my whole career in RC would look completely different. It's literally life changing to someone who is taking this hobby seriously. I mean, I mean that 100%. And if this is just a hobby that you're not trying to reach the top, you just want to enjoy yourself, it's going to be great for you also, because you learn how to understand your car, adjust it better, learn how to practice better, improve your driving, all that stuff, all in one place. So check this video out, and uh, if you're interested in learning more, check out the description. Thank you for your time. We're talking about practice, man. I mean, how silly is that, man? We're talking about practice. Okay, next step in understanding roll centers. Jacking. As the car drives in around a corner and rolls, the roll center placement determines what proportion of the forces travel through the links and arms and what proportion go into the shock spring as the car rolls. A high roll center a large amount of those forces go through the arms and links. And remember, maybe now we can tie something together here. We've been talking before about initial grip. This is why a high roll center has more initial grip, because there's more geometric roll resistance. That roll resistance comes from the, the higher amount of force traveling through the arms and links. So that's actually what's resisting the roll. Then a lower roll center has less geometric roll resistance because less of the forces are traveling through the arms and links. And that cause it causes a larger amount of the force to go into the shock spring as the car rolls. But you don't need to believe me. You can believe your own eyes. Watch this. I replaced the shocks with a coin. That coin is holding the car up right now. And now what I'll do is I'll twist the hubs as if the car was in a corner. I can't twist the wheels because they're so flexible. So I'm going to twist the hubs. What do you think will happen when the coin drops? There you go. The jacking force is holding the chassis up. If I reduce tension, the chassis drops. In fact, if I twist both the outside and inside hubs clockwise, like they would be twisting in a corner, and I apply enough force, I can actually lift the chassis. That's the magic of the jacking force. I hope this is beginning to make sense to you now. The, the three different things here of load transfer, initial grip, and... Uh, roll centers determining how the forces travel uh, through the car. Faster load transfer leads to more initial grip and that's caused by more of the forces while cornering traveling th through the arms and links which cause the geometry to resist roll. So instead of rolling load transfers quickly because the load transferring through the arms and links is instant. So the load moves quickly to the outside tire, 
you have a lot of initial grip and response and at that point then the tires are unequally loaded so the outside tire is loaded more inside tire is loaded less that means that that axle will then at that point have less traction that's why a car with a lot of initial grip tends to drive very aggressively but on a for example loose track maybe you have a lot of turn into a corner and then it pushes or you have a lot of turn into a corner and then you lose the rear end so it's not consistent because of this reason you have initial grip and then after that you have less grip and that has to do with the load transfer the unequally loaded tires left to right and uh, the fact that these things happen quickly so hopefully this is beginning to make sense now but that's not really what we want to talk about now we'll continue to break this down and uh, elaborate more on what I just explained but now we want to talk about jacking because there's one distinct thing that happens to the car due to these forces traveling through the arms and links other than load transfer to the outside tire and that's the fact that when the roll center is above ground level there's a vertical component to these forces that vertical component will lift the car up the way I understand this or sort of visualize this myself is that looking at the car as the car rolls the upper link is actually pulling on the car the fact that the link is pulling on on the chassis of the car means that as it tries to roll that chassis wants to roll downwards that's how it can achieve roll but the link is pulling on it so that's what's causing the geometric resistance to roll it's not allowing the chassis to roll down now if the angle of the link is large that link will actually be pulling upwards on the chassis so it's not just stopping the chassis from rolling down it's actually pulling it upwards also now as this happens and the upper link manages to pull the chassis upwards slightly what happens next is that the lower arm will actually be in a position where the inside of the arm is higher than the outside and since the, since the lower arm on the outside is being compressed what happens then is that the lower arm will also cause the chassis to rise up so the jacking force lifts the chassis of the car upwards so what is this sorcery well what you need to understand is just the basics of linkage mechanisms if you have a system like this it's unstable you see that the link can twist if I put the link like this and start pulling outwards I'm just pulling sideways now look what happens the link wants to straighten out I'm not moving my hands up and down I'm just moving them sideways so if the link is straight and I push on it nothing happens if it's at an angle boom the other way boom so this is an unstable mechanism when I pull the link straightens out this is what's happening to the upper link of the car on the car the hub is pulling on the link so if I pull on this link here it wants to straighten out lifting the car up the lower arm also affects jacking so if you remember I mentioned that the lower arm is being compressed the tire is firmly on the ground and the chassis is pushing outwards so that we are now looking at the outside lower arm so I'll hold on to the hub as if the tire is now gripping the ground then I'm going to push on the arm using this arm holder when the arm is perfectly horizontal and I push nothing happens if the inner pivot is higher than the outer pivot and I push it raises the chassis if the inner pivot is lower than the outer pivot and I push it lowers the chassis the lower arm position has a major effect 
of the direction of the jacking force. And we can see that clearly in some pictures. So here, for example, we see a Kyosho. Now, the Kyosho is a car that has a relatively high roll center, actually, in the rear, especially. So they have both roll centers above the ground, clearly. And that means that there are jacking forces trying to lift the car up. Here we see the car entering a corner and the rear is all the way up at maximum droop. The, the inside tire is actually off the ground completely. Now, this can happen even when you aren't braking. In this picture, I don't know if the driver is also braking, but you don't need to. All you need to do with a high roll center is really to turn into a corner. And you will see that the rear end lifts up. We actually have video of this. First, you'll see a car go around the corner with a high roll center. As you can see, the rear end is high up off the ground. The jacking effect is in full force. Now, a car with a low roll center. Here you can see that the car is quite level. If the roll center was lower, the car would be even lower. Here's a quick comparison just to see that nothing else was changed. It was the same corner, driving the same way, only the rear roll center was changed. In the top picture, you have a higher roll center. So the rear end of the car has lifted up. The jacking force has caused this. In the lower picture, you have a lower roll center. So the jacking force is so small that it doesn't lift the car up. Now, if you had a really low roll center with this same setup, maybe you would have a situation where the car would actually roll downwards. Okay, so with the roll center above the ground, we have a jacking force that lifts the car up. This is an effect that drivers call on the track. The car feels like it's driving on the track. Um, it sort of feels high, feels like it's not connected to the track. It feels like it wants to flip over. That, those are the negative sides of on the track. If a car like this feels good, then the good side of on the track is that the car is really responsive, changes direction quickly, squares up quickly. You have a lot of in initial grip as discussed before, so it's very precise to drive. If there's no risk of flipping over, then you can be really fast with a setup like this. But on the track is the term that's used for when the jacking force is lifting the car up off the track. The opposite happens if the roll center is set to be below the ground. In this case, the forces don't actually lift the chassis, they actually pull it down. And this is what drivers call in the track. So now they feel that the car is sucked into the track. When you get on power in a corner and the forces grow, they actually pull the car down. So what ends up happening is, let's say you're in trouble and you hit a bump and the car rises up and will possibly flip over. If you get on throttle, then you can actually manage to pull that car back down and the car won't flip over. <laughs> That's why in the track is a preferred way to set the cars up. I actually remember a story about this. So Atsushihara said that he prefers to drive a car when it feels like it's in the track. And I remember the conversation because he, he didn't really know how to achieve that. He says that when he has a car like that, he can do well and he feels comfortable. But he doesn't always manage to do that. He can't always get the car to feel in the track. So he did a, it was clear to me that he didn't really know how to do it. And that made me think also that I don't either understand. Like, how, how do I do that? 
and that's then one of the reasons that I wanted to learn to understand what determines when a car is on the track or in the track. How do you actually do that? And roll centers is the answer. So when you have a roll center that's below ground level, the car will drive in the track. The forces going through the arms and links will want to pull the chassis down instead of push it up. Here we have a picture of uh, Martin Baez's car from the Worlds in Italy. And here you can see that the car is rolling, but it's not high up off the ground. So if you compare to that previous picture that I just showed, look at that. The rear end is up high, the inner rear tires off the ground as the car is turning left. But on Martin Baez's x-ray here, the opposite is happening. So the car is rolling, but it's rolling downwards. It's actually staying relatively flat, but if he, if he got even harder on the gas here, it would roll downwards. And that's because he has a ro uh, low enough roll center for this condition. So now you might think that, okay, so if in the track is good, then why not just set the roll centers super low and then it's basically impossible for you to flip over and you'll dominate. Just give, a, give Hara a car where the roll centers are super low and the car is sucked down into the track. He'll win every race. Well, there's a problem because there's also, of course, something negative about low roll centers. It has to do with camber change, and that's what we're going to talk about now.